what we're seeing at elite American colleges. Once again, they're becoming places for anti-Semitic messages to be promoted. Anti-Israel activists used red spray paint to deface a building at Cornell University in New York City, uh, in New York, I should say, while massive protests were held on the first day of class. This is just the start of the college year. Are you concerned that we might see an escalation like we saw these protests turn quite violent just a few months ago? Yeah, there probably is. There are going to be more demonstrations, but they this one seemed to be much smaller. And I think you'll find at the other colleges they're smaller because, look, let's... Racists. These are left-wing racists. They're the worst type of people who support the oldest hatred in the world, the hatred of Jewish people. We can call it anti-Semitism, and they say they're pro-Palestinian, they're anti-Netanyahu. No, these people hate Jews, right? They are racists. And that's what their parents and friends of others have worked out. As they've gone around over the last few months and people have said, why are you involved in this Jewish hating demonstrations? Some of these young people have started to realise this is not just not such a good thing to be associated with. Um, we're being accused of being Hamas supporters. We're being accused of being anti-Semitic. They don't know any Palestinians. This is just the hard extreme left venting their anger at Western culture, Western society, and because Israel part of the Western alliance, they attack Israel, right? None of these people... Where, where are they supporting the Ukraine? Where are they saying that the Ukraine will be free? None of them. Not one of them, right? This is just Jewish hatred, anti-Western hatred. And as I said, the demonstration will be smaller because so many of these young people are now realising this is not a cause they should be supporting. They are just expressions of hatred of Jews, you know, uh, camouflaged in this, oh, we're for Palestinian rights. Well, no, they're not. They just hate Jews. They can't explain what type of government there would be. They call for the destruction of Israel and the killing of Jews by yelling that from, Palestine, from, from the river to the sea, which is just a disgusting phrase. Uh, no, these people are doing themselves a lot of damage and the stain on their racism and Jewish hatred will live with them forever, Gab. Let's look at the conflict in the Middle East. Israeli forces rescued a 52-year-old hostage from the tunnels in Gaza. Kaid Fran al Qadi landed back in Israel and his family have uh, expressed their gratitude. It's pretty amazing seeing that footage and it certainly gives us some hope and some reason to celebrate, but it's also an important reminder that we need all the hostages back. Absolutely. There's still 106 there and uh, you've been to Israel, as I have uh, this year, to, to see the trauma and anguish that's, that, these, yeah. that these families are going through. What an extraordinary rescue. One man was just on his own that the, the Israelis found. Uh, just fantastic news, but there's still 106 to go. I mean, why... Why aren't these demonstrators at Cornell, by the way, yelling, you know, free the hostages? Yeah. Uh, you, you know, what we've seen in the Middle East is Hamas and in Gaza. Hamas use innocent Palestinians as human shields. That's all they are. They're just fodder. They're just fodder. That's why they hide in people's homes. They hide in hospitals and schools and under them. And uh, the Palestinians who've been killed uh, are just... Uh, this is Hamas's fault and nobody else's fault. Uh, but wonderful to see this person... Um, Wonderful to see this person, um, you know, rescued after all these after all these months, Gab. Just your thoughts on how this is all Hamas's fault. Is that uh, your response to to the news today that at least ten Palestinians were killed in a major operation by Israeli forces in the north of the West Bank? Uh, Israeli security forces said that they begun a counterterrorism operation. What, what's your response? Well, what's clear now from all the international press is that Iran are funneling weapons through um, intermediary countries, uh, Iraq and Syria, through to um, these Palestinian activists uh, on the West Bank. And uh, they're arming them as much as they can to create more strife for Israel. And as always, Israel has to defend itself against Palestinian terrorism. And that's exactly what they're doing, whether it's coming from Hezbollah, whether it's coming from Hamas, from Hamas, um, from Islamic Jihad, uh, from elements of Fatah in the West Bank, Israel's got to defend itself. And as usual, innocent Palestinians get killed because we see these militants hiding out in people's homes. That's what these people do. 
you know, Yaya Sinwa famously said not so long ago, was reported as saying, well, you know, these uh, these innocent Palestinians get killed, that's just, you know, part of the game we play. You know, that's if they get killed, it's, it's helpful to Hamas because it creates outrage in the West and uh, outrage amongst these, you know, ignorant young students at uh, Cornell and other universities. So, of course, Israel has to defend itself when when the Janine, you know, camp is not that far from Tel Aviv. I mean, it's a very small country. And, of course, Israel has to defend itself. It has no choice. Mm. And finally, the Israeli military launched what it called a preemptive strike against Hezbollah in Lebanon just a few days ago, as the Iran-backed militant group said it carried out its own attacks in response to the killing of a top commander. How much longer can Hezbollah fight back while so many of its leaders have been killed? Well, for quite a long time. It has a huge amount of weaponry, and uh, when one leader gets killed, someone else comes along, which is why... As we all know, you'll never wipe out Hamas, and Netanyahu knows that. But uh, what he's trying to say to the Israeli population is, we'll kill as many of these terrorists as we can. But he knows, like we all know, that they'll never be extinguished, like Nazis have never been extinguished. Um, there are still Nazis around the world, as we know. So um, what Israel wants is to get a peaceful resolution of the situation with Hezbollah in Lebanon. Um, but they have a huge number of rockets. They have a massive armoury. But, of course, they've got to be careful because the, the Lebanese population don't particularly like Hezbollah, who are in the south of the country, just north mm. of the Israeli border. So the, the Lebanese population are tiring of Hezbollah. Um, they're there by courtesy of the you know, Syria, of their Lebanese government, but they're, they're getting sick of the Hezbollah. I mean, why, why does the average Lebanese person want to have these terrorists, uh, you know, south of, of the Latani River? They don't want them there, uh, but they're still there, supported by Iran. So... They'll go on as long as they're armed by Iran and as long as the Lebanese population will tolerate them. And uh, they must be straining out, 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 you know, outstaying their welcome because uh, they're not bringing any joy to Lebanon, which is a country now in, with a severe economic crisis. Michael Kroger, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure, Gab.